do we need to wait till the screen stuff comes up or so I think we're going to I think that we're good um, technicians are working on it right now in just a moment. Okay, looks like we're going to check and make sure everyone's screens are coming on. Ah. Scott, are you ready? I think we are, sir. I want to welcome everybody to the June 2nd Metropolitan Area Planning Commission meeting. The first item on the agenda, let's have the opening announcements, please. And sir, on this one, we do not have the video available, so I'm just going to read the statement so that everyone still gets it. Okay. Before we begin the agenda, the Wichita Sedgwick County Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and the Wichita Sedgwick County Board of Zoning Appeals would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this public hearing. For those in attendance, copies of, a, of the agenda for today's meeting, the public hearing procedure and planning department staff reports on all agenda items are available in the lobby. The planning commissions and the BZA's bylaws limit the applicant on a zoning subdivision or variance application and his or her representatives to a total of 10 minutes of speaking time at the start of the hearing on that item, plus up to two minutes at the conclusion of that hearing. All other persons wishing to speak on agenda items are limited to three minutes per person. However, if they feel that it is needed and justified, the chairman may extend these times by up to two minutes. All speakers are requested to state his or her name and address for the record when beginning to speak. When you are finished speaking, please share your name, address, and the case number on the sheet provided in the room. This will enable staff to notify you if there are any additional proceedings concerning that item. All speakers at the podium, please remove your face mask before speaking into the microphone. Please note that all written and visual materials you present to the commission and the board will be retained by the secretary as part of the official record. If you are not speaking, but you wish to be notified about future proceedings on a particular case, please provide your contact information to the planning department. The planning commission and the board are interested in hearing the views of all persons who wish to express themselves on all the agenda items. However, we ask that all speakers please be courteous and concise as possible and avoid long repetitions of facts or opinions, which have already been stated. For your information, the Wichita City Council has adopted a policy for all city zoning items. A copy of this policy is available from the planning staff. The City Council relies on a written record of the Planning Commission hearing and does not conduct its own additional public hearings on these items. The decision of the BZA is final. Any appeal of a decision of the BZA is to district court. Thank you. The next item we'll have roll call. Yes, sir. Bill Johnson? Here. Fox? Here. McKay? Here. Williams Bay? Here. Sir, I showed 12 members present and two absent. Thank you. Next item is to approve the uh, meeting minutes on May 19th, and I show that Ms. Fox, John Williams Bay, Duell, and McKay should abstain from voting on this. Question for staff on the bottom of page 39 and the top of page 40. It shows that both the mo it says that both the motion and the substitute motion both passed. Is that possible? <laughs> I I think what is there is the the first motion 
um, is highlighted, whereas probably something as part of our template that just needs to be removed. So the substitute motion was what passed, and the, that motion was just an error in not removing it from our, our template. Okay, thank you. I just, um, on my black and white copy, the fact that it's crossed out is a little hard to tell. Thank you. Got a motion approved by Ms. Miles. Second. Second by Ms. Fox. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. Uh, oh, she can't second it. Well, back up. She's got to abstain. Ms. Foster, second it. Any, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? It carries eight, zero, four. Now we're going to go through the agenda and see which items we can take on consent. The first items on subdivision is 2021-00056. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioner virtual want to hear this case? Is there anybody in the chamber here want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? We take that on consent. The next one, subdivision 2022-00021. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take that on consent. Next one, subdivision 2022-00022. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers here want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take that on consent. The next one, subdivision 2022-00023. Is there anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers want to hear this case? Anybody... Virtual want to hear this case. We take that on consent. Yeah, yes, I didn't hear my name in the beginning. What case are you looking for? Zero zero twenty three. You want to hear that case? If we could clarify whether or not we have a zoning case twenty twenty two. Triple zero twenty three. This is a subdivision case. Are you want that, or you want the zoning case? It's twenty twenty two zero 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 twenty three, and I didn't hear my name in the beginning of the meeting, so I want to make sure that that you have me on the list. Ma'am, are you? If, if the case that you're interested in is it a case that is rezoning a property? No. Okay. Ma'am, are you the property owner of this subdivision case? Yes. I would disagree with that because I'm also on the line. Okay, so I think she probably is interested in the zoning case. I mean, if we if we need to hear it and do a quick or an abbreviated thing, it'd probably be best to ensure just so we, that we don't. Okay, we will hear Can case. Her? Can you ask her to read the first three letters of her case? Z, like a zebra, oh. O-N, 2022. Yes, yes ma'am, uh, we will... Zero. 
We will get to that, the zoning items in just a second. We're going through the agenda right now and we are currently on the subdivision cases that the first three letters are S-U-B. So hang on a moment, we will be getting to the public hearing items and we will make note that uh, you want to hear zone Z-O-N 2022-00023. Okay. Okay. So we can take uh, item 2.4 on consent. Next one's 2.5, subdivision 2022, 0024. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take that on consent. Look for a motion for 2 1 through 2 5. Second. Who seconded? Green. Motion by Mr. Hartman, second by Mr. Green. Any discussion? If none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? 12-0. Okay, now we're going to go through the public hearings, which is the vacation cases. Vacation 2022, 0013. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Okay, we can take that on consent. The next case is vacation case 2022 0014. And this goes along with case 4.6, which is PUD 2022 0011. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Yes, uh, my name is Harold Schlechtweg and I live at 351 North Fern Street. I would like to hear this case. Okay. And I would ask, I okay. would ask it to be uh, deferred until uh, we that it be heard together with PUD 2022-0011. Just hang on, we'll hear this case. We're just going through the agenda now. Next one's 3.3 .3, vacation case 2022 0015. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? <clears throat> Any commissioner or virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take that on consent. I look for a motion for 3-1 and 3-3. Three, three. Second. Second by Ms. Miles. Yes. Green made the motion to approve. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? 12-0. Okay, we're going to go through the public hearing items. Conditional 2022-00008. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take that on consent. Item 4.2, conditional 2022-00009. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? We will hear that case. Next one's 4.3, and it's 2022-00010. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? 
Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the commission chambers want to hear this case? We'll hear this case. Next one's 4.4 CUP 2022-00019. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners of virtual want to hear this case? Anybody here in the commission chambers want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Take that on consent. Do you do 2022 10 Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? How about it? Oh, green does. We'll hear that. Next one is uh, 4.6 PUD 2022 0011. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? That's a lady called on that one. We'll take that. 4.7. I think she wanted to hear that case too. Okay, we'll hear that. 4.8. Zoning 2022 0027. Anybody on the commission want to hear this case? Any commissioners that are virtual want to hear this case? Anybody in the chamber here want to hear this case? Anybody virtual want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take that on consent. I have a question. What happened to uh, 4.6? We're going to hear that case in a minute. All right. So we are. Motion by Mr. Hartman. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Foster. All right. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? 12 votes. All right, I think the first case we're going to hear is 4.2, conditional 2022 0009. 3.2, don't we? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. 3.2, vacation case 2022 0014. Bill Longnecker, Senior Planner for Plans, uh, vacation case 2022 14 is a request to vacate a portion of North Millwood Avenue. And that portion is located approximately 60 feet north of its intersection with West St. Louis Street and dead ends as a hammerhead south of the North McLean Boulevard right of way. This is a paved local street right of way with 80 feet of right of way. Uh, the applicant is looking to use this property in. Uh, conjunction with planned use development PUD 2022-00011, which you will hear today. And if approved, this vacated roadway will provide parking and internal circulation for that multifamily residential development, that PUD 2022-00011 is proposing. Um, you can see on your vicinity map the uh, site itself up against McLean Boulevard, and you can also see it's above its West St. Louis uh, intersection. Now, you can also see the uh, Vine Street and Fern Street where St. Louis intersects. That is uh, city owned properties that abut Vine and Fern and also the proposed vacated right of way. That's all a PUD 2022-11. So that 
would provide uh, additional excess in and out of that PUD. We've noted that uh, we have stormwater, a water line, a water hydrant located in the North Millwood right away. And uh, we've noted in the staff report that we need dedications to cover those easements. Those are listed on uh, pages, uh, one, conditions one through nine, and we'll go through those. We've also noted that uh, Evergy has given us comments on that in regards to they have no equipment in the subject right away. Uh, we've noted that vehicular traffic, pedestrian traffic, public safety should not be impacted by this vacation request if approved with the listed uh, conditions. We've noted also that even though traffic patterns would not change with the proposed vacation because this is a hammerhead street and that the adjacent uh, southwest and north southeast properties still have access to both Millwood and East St. Louis. So your traffic patterns aren't going to change, but we do note that there would be an increase in traffic in the area because of the proposed multifamily development. Um, this was approved by the subdivision committee. Uh, we have, uh, up until now, not received any calls on this particular case, this particular planner. But again, we're looking at approving this with the conditions that we've got listed. Should be noted that the very first condition listed is uh, vacation described portion of North Millwood right away is contingent upon approval of PUD 2022-11. Also, I would draw your attention to condition three, which we're requesting a dedication of a 15 foot wide water line pedestrian easement that will provide unhindered access to the water line and allow unhindered pedestrian access from that portion of North Millwood Avenue, not included in the vacation, to the sidewalk located in and run parallel to North McLean Boulevard right away. Um, we're also looking for dedication for or an easement for stormwater and their equipment in the area. Uh, the other conditions are pretty much uh, boilerplate language and we will stand for question. Thank you, Bill. Any questions of staff? Thank you, Bill. Applicant or agent? Kirk Miller, K. Miller Engineering, 117 East Lewis. I'm the agent. Um, I think Bill covered it pretty well. And and the reason we want to vacate this is because of the PUD, PUD cases coming up later, just access through the property, and it'll actually put it on a tax roll also. So it'd be beneficial to the city in that aspect. Plus, we would put all the utility easements and that type of stuff that would be necessary. Any questions of the agent? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody in the commission chambers want to speak on this item? Anybody virtual want to speak on this item? Uh, I would like to speak on this. Okay, give us your name and address, please. My name is Harold Schleckweg, and I live at 351 North Fern Street. And my request is that action be deferred on this uh, and that, uh, I mean, I can repeat myself again when uh, we talk about uh, 4.6, but I would rather just speak on 4.6 because uh, this is integral to 4.6. So 4.6, Unless 4.6 is approved, this um, this is uh, should not be uh, vacated. So I'd ask that no action be taken to approve this until uh, 4.6, the hearing on 4.6 takes place. Thank you. You understand if uh, if this is approved, it won't be approved if we don't approve item 4.6. Correct, Bill. Be correct. That's the first condition listed on your staff report. Is there anybody else want to speak on this item? Hearing none. Move to approve as presented. Second. 
Got a motion to approve by Mr. Warren, second by Mr. Hartman. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Carries 12 0. The next item is uh, 4.2. 2022-00009. And I believe, is Mary going to make a presentation on this? Good afternoon, uh, Commissioners. Mary Hunt, Principal Planner in uh, the Planning Department. Uh, before you, I have a request for a conditional use for a group residence limited. Hey, Mary. Yes? Can you move that mic closer to your... There you go. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have a request for a conditional use for a group residence limited. And what that means is that there have to be equal to or less than 15 persons, including residents as well as staff people. Uh, the current zoning, uh, we have two lots, and they have uh, on the left side is TF3, two-family residential, and then on the right, which is shown in green, we have MF29 multifamily residential, and it totals not quite uh, two-thirds of an acre. Okay. So group residences are basically residential facilities providing cooking, sleeping, sanitary accommodations for a group of people not defined as a family. Uh, when it's defined as group residence limited, then it's a group residence that's occupied by anywhere from six to 15 people, but no more. And then it includes your staff people as well as residents. Okay. Can I have the next slide? Okay, hey, here's just an aerial shot of those two lots. Right now, the request before you is to build only on the left or the west side of this, <coughs> these two parcels, although they're going to do some landscaping on the, on the uh, one to the east. Right now, the building would only be on the one on the west. We're located here right off of um, Amadon, no, sorry, Hillside Avenue and uh, 14th Street, and across the street here to the uh, west is the parking lot to St. Mark's Methodist Church, which is one of the sponsors for this program. Next slide. Okay, here's our comprehensive plan map showing, it's, a bit, it's our general land use map showing uh, predominantly residential around this area. There are some other institutions, including, again, St. Mark's. We have Holy Savior to the south. We have another um, church a little bit north, further north on um, Hillside. Next slide. And here is the site plan that the client provided. And you can see it's between Lorraine Avenue on the west, Hillside on the east, and they're connected by 14th Street. And you can see the, um, the group residence, the first one, that's the one there. Um, intending to build first, and then the rest of the property, the, the joining property between the two, as well as the one on the, uh, on the east, that'll all just be landscaping for the time being. My understanding is sometime in the future, they'll build a second uh, unit if, if that works out for them. Okay, next slide. Okay, here's a rendering. Uh, it's, it's not exactly what they're going to do because you can, if you compared the two, um, the site plan and this, you'd notice that the stairs leading up to the facilities is slightly different. But conceptually, this is what they're looking at. Okay, next. Okay, here's just some photos from the field. This is looking kind of kitty corner across to the vacant lots that we have right now. Next. And then here's look, look on the far left is the is the site, but now we're looking down 14th Street uh, towards Hillside. Okay, keep going. 
And now we're looking south uh, on Lorraine. And you can see it's a common, it's primarily residential around this area unless you have a, a, an institution like churches. And then again, and now we're looking west with the school bus. And so the property on the far right of the picture is the uh, landscaped area around the church's parking lot at St. Mark's Church. Okay. And are there any others, or is that my last one? Nope, here's one. Uh, this is just getting up a little closer to the church, St. Mark's uh, Methodist, that's um, one of the sponsors here. This is if you walked across the street from the subject parcel and uh, got up close to their landscaping and such. Okay. Any yeah. questions of staff? I've got one. Mr. Harry, has this been heard by the DAB committee? No. It will be later this month, though, mid month. Mr. Green? The uh, zoning code defines group residences as a residence, uh, residential facility providing cooking, sleeping, and sanitary accommodations. Uh, the next paragraph, it says that the applicant plans to provide seven bedrooms, seven bathrooms, and two restrooms without bath and showers. That's right. Is that sanitary conditions or? It's two persons, excuse me, there'll be two persons per bedroom. That'll give you four could have 14 people in that in one building. They are allowed to share bedrooms. The, well, the, the question is, the two restrooms are not gonna have baths or showers. Right, they're just restrooms out there. In, they'll so, be just restrooms that are uh, servicing people that are, um, say, in the, in the living room or such. The bathrooms are actually private with with the bedrooms, but then you still have restrooms. You know, they'll have people on occasion visiting just okay. to be, be providing services there, and so they still need a restroom for right. anyone I, coming Okay, in. I didn't okay. understand that. I, the way I read that was that there were gonna be two restrooms and there weren't gonna be baths or showers. Okay. <laughs> that would be a problem. <laughs> yes, okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions of staff? Have we have we received any calls? Can you speak in your mic, please? Yeah. Have we received any calls from the neighborhood? I have not. Neighborhood? Okay. Any other questions of staff? Hearing none, thank you. Okay. Applicant or agent? Name and address, you got 10 minutes. Uh, Mark Wagner with Icon Construction um, on behalf of Nehemiah Village. Uh, point of clarification, the property on the east is currently zoned multifamily and can, that's where we plan to start building. The property on the west is the one that was going to be at a later date depending on how, the outcome of this. So I think we kind of got a little backwards. So I just want to make that clarification. The other thing too is there will be 14, 14 total, 14 total occupants, including staff. And the only visitors to this site will be professional services people. So it's not like family can come over and visit. Any questions to the applicant? Any questions? Thank you. Anybody else want to speak on this item? Anybody else want to speak on this item? Hearing none, anybody virtual want to speak on this item? Hearing none, we'll bring it back to commission. What's the pleasure of the board? I move we approve so the staff comments. Second. Got a motion approved by Mr. McKay, second by Ms. Miles. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Carries 12 vote. The next item is 20, conditional 2022 triple zero 10.
Good afternoon, everyone. Christina Reith, Associate Planner. This is case number CON 2022-00010. The applicant is West Central LLC, with the agent being the Boffman Company. The property is zoned LC Limited Commercial, and they are requesting a conditional use to allow vehicle and equipment sales in the LC Zoning District. The property is almost one acre, 0.93 acres, and it is located at 5534 West Central Avenue. Staff is recommending that we approve it with conditions. Um, next, uh, next slide, please. So as you can see here, there's a lot of parking currently in this spot. Uh, there's already a bar, a barber shop, and a restaurant. So they're proposing to develop it on the southwest corner, so they're not demolishing any of the buildings for this. I believe that they're expanding the top building to create an office for the used um, sales. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is also located in the future growth uh, concept map. Next slide, please. Uh, so there is a diagram that I was speaking of earlier. Next slide, please. And uh, here is a map of the two other vehicle and equipment businesses within one mile of the subject property. One is located on the southwest corner of West Hoover Avenue and West Central Avenue, and the other is located on the northeast corner of Northwest Street and West 3rd Street North. Next slide, please. Uh, so here is the current building that is being occupied on the lot. Next slide, please. Um, and here's uh, another side of it. Uh, next slide, please. Sorry, next slide, please. I'm trying to find the picture of the, uh, the mature hedgerow. <laughs> Sorry, next slide, please. Here we go. So uh, the property to the north of the subject site is zoned TF3, two family, and is already screened from this commercial property with a mature hedgerow. And according to section three of the landscape ordinance, vehicle and equipment sales are already exempt from providing parking lot screening. Uh, the conditional use is in conformance with the goals of the Wichita Places for People plan. The proposed vehicle and equipment sales brings infill to a current parking lot and the subject property is located within an identified area of opportunity, and the addition of a new business will assist in the area's reinvestment. Based on the information available at the time the report was prepared, staff recommends that conditional use be approved subject to the following conditions. Staff recommends, but not requires, the applicant to complete the sidewalk connection on North Hoover Avenue and West Central Avenue, and the conditional use shall be limited to the sale of cars and pickup light trucks, it will not allow the outside repair or maintenance services of vehicles unless a building is provided for this activity. All improvements to the property must be finished before car sales is permitted, and no vehicles for sale shall be displayed in, requ in the required off-street parking spaces, and no parking is allowed on unpaved services of the lot. I will now stand for questions. Any questions, staff? I've got one. As far as the sidewalk recommendation, where is it going? Um, on, on the corner of North Hoover Avenue to West Central Avenue. So along the... There's, there's basically like two or three panels missing right here. Oh, okay. Any other questions, staff? Thank you. Applicant or agent? Good afternoon, Russ A.V. Boffman Company, agent for the applicant. I'll stand for any questions that you may have. We're in agreement with staff recommendations. Any questions, the agent? I guess not. Thank you. Anybody in the commission chambers want to speak on this item? Anybody virtual want to speak on this item? Hearing none, we'll bring it back to commission. Move to approve. Second. Got a motion by Ms. Miles? Yes. Second by Mr. Green. Any discussion? I just want to make a note that Ms. Miles voted on a car lot. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Carries 12 
existing car lot. <laughs> Next item, PD uh, 2022, 0010. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Philip Ziebenberg in with planning staff. PUD 2022-10 is a rezoning or zone change request from single family residential to planned unit development to develop the Pathway Church Planned Unit Development number 99. The property is located on the west side of North Mays Road, about a quarter mile south of West 21st Street North. It's about 33.56 acres um, and is currently developed with Pathway Church. Go to the aerial. The genesis of this PUD, as you can see, is that um, even outside of the parking lots uh, for Pathway Church, there's a considerable amount of undeveloped land that the church owns. And the church is looking to, my understanding is the church is looking to sell off portions of this undeveloped land um, in order to be developed with um, office uses as well as uh, multifamily dwellings in, in the form of duplexes. They'll just be on a single lot with multiple duplexes on one lot. If we skip ahead to the uh, PUD drawing, a uh, few slides ahead from here. There you go. So the right now it's one platted lot, and you can see there is platted right-of-way in a form of a cul-de-sac here on the west, which is the um, end point for West, west uh, Lawn Street. Um, the proposed PUD looks to create four parcels, parcel one, encompassing the majority of the land that the church currently occupies. It would change the base zoning from SF5 to TF3. However, they're not looking at doing any additional development on the church parcel itself. The PUD language does provide provisions in there for some commercial or office type uses within the structure of the building. Um, my understanding is this is a provision so that if sometime in the future, the church is no longer occupying the building, that the PUD may not have to be amended in the future to allow for some level of office or medical type use um, within the confines of the building, knowing it's of considerable size. Um, so it's not necessarily to do that type of use right now, um, just more of kind of future proofing the uh, PUD. Uh, and as we'll see on the comprehensive plan map, you're gonna see that um, the comprehensive plan identifies this area actually for new employment. Um, so that is within conformance to the comprehensive plan. Parcel two is the smallest. It's down here in the right-hand corner of the site. Uh, the property directly south of it, these two parcels right here, are zoned neighborhood office. And so the base zoning for parcel two is also neighborhood office and would afford the opportunity to develop office type uses that are consistent with what is already developed along Mays Road to the south of that. Those two parcels right there are currently zoned with, are developed with, I believe, a dental and a, like an orthodontic type of office. So something very in kind with what is already along Mays Road. Parcels three and four occupy the northwest and the southwest portion of the site and are definitely the more um, interesting and robust portions of this development, as you can see on the plan. Uh, their base zoning would be two-family residential. Parcel three would um, allow up to 37 dwelling units. Obviously, if you have duplexes, you're not going to have an odd number. Um, parcel four would allow up to 54 dwelling units. The total number of duplexes is 42, so that equals 84 total dwelling units when you combine the two parcels together. The proposed density of parcels three and four is eight dwelling units per acre, which is less than what is permitted within two family residential, which is 14 and a half. Uh, so they're actually under the density cap of what two family residential could allow um, if it was just developed with two family residential with a multifamily overlay. Parking for the PUD will follow the standard ratios for the zoning code. Um, in addition to that, the developer is actually going to be providing some common spaces throughout the, develop the duplex development area. So the duplexes, as you can see, the common shape that we've seen with garages and driveways out front. The garages and driveways take care of the parking requirement for the actual dwelling unit. You can see throughout the plan that there's actually common parking spaces throughout the development to you know, further assist um, parking for visitors or, or things like that. Um, through the duplex development.
Parcel 1 contains a private drive that connects West West Lawn with Mays Road. That private drive is, as part of the PUD, under control of Parcel 1, which is the church. Um, the, if you were to go west out of here, if you take West Lawn west of the property, you come to an intersection of North, North Stony Point. There's no stop sign there, and one of the conditions of approval that staff is recommending based on a uh, site visit is to have a stop sign involved, installed at that intersection, knowing some traffic would be going to the west of the neighborhood. Um, something that has been a conversation since the mailing of the staff report is staff has been um, talking with traffic engineering. A lot of the comments you're likely going to be hearing today is based about the increase in traffic and the concern of the traffic going through the neighborhood. Um, if you go back to the aerial, if all of this traffic were to have to go out on the public right of way here, you're either going up Stony Point to Parkdale to 21st Street or down Stony Point to Westport to Mays Road. Traffic engineering, their perspective on this is West Lawn was platted not necessarily to provide opportunity for development on this site to go west, although the church does use it when you know, it empties during the weekend or a midweek activity. It was to provide opportunity for, if future development was gonna happen through here, the possibility of having a connection for this subdivision over here to get to Mays Road. And so something that could be for your consideration today, we have not updated our recommendation, but something for your consideration today per traffic engineering's review is some sort of cross lot agreement, access easement through parcel one for that private drive to provide dedicated access other than it being a public street because it's not a public street, but basically a dedicated access along this private drive for the residential development to get to Mays Road to help alleviate the traffic concerns of folks going through the neighborhood to get to 21st Street or to Mays Road. If it remains a private drive and there's no access easement, the church could, not saying they would, potentially gate it and all of the traffic of the residential development would have to use the public rights of way through the neighborhood. Uh, signage and architectural control, um, we're just kind of moving on from that. Um, is per the code, really nothing there. Something that staff is Recommending it's not a requirement, but just knowing um, when you have cluster style development here, you know, to have all the duplexes look the same, maybe provide some architectural variety. Again, not a recommendation per se in terms of requirement, but just something to consider uh, to break up the, the monotony of the garages and how the buildings look if they all have to look, look the same uh, throughout the duplex development. The PUD text requires a landscape buffer that is one and a half times the standard of the Wichita landscape ordinance. The standard in the ordinance is one shade tree per 40 linear feet. So one and a half times that would be 20, one every 20 feet. So, and that would be along the south property line here, the west property line here, and the west property line there, where this duplex development would be meeting the existing single family home and single family residential development. In addition, the PUD text is requiring a six foot solid screening fence along the same property lines where it is not existing right now. A lot of these backyards of these homes already have um, existing six foot screening fences. There are some gaps, so they would have to provide it where um, those gaps exist. The caveat to this is <coughs> with the PUD language requiring the screening, it doesn't just, it says it has to be installed where the gaps are, but because the screening is required, if any portion of those fences come down, the applicant is responsible for replacing them. They're currently constructed by the single family homeowners to the west or the south, but they're required to maintain that screening. They only have to install what's where the gaps are right now, but the screening is required from here on in the future if this is approved. Surrounding this site, we have a uh, mix of different type of uses to, if you go to the zoning map to the north, we have a combination of limited commercial and general commercial within a community unit plan. And you have fast food restaurants, you have a body shop, you have a uh, Ashley's furniture store, there's a bank. Um, to the west and the south is predominantly single family residential. 
there's a planned unit development that we heard just a couple years ago that has kind of mixture of commercial uses. Um, we talked about the neighborhood office uses on Mays Road. Uh, this neighborhood office on the east side of Mays Road is an insurance company. Um, but again, you just have a mixture of commercial and residential uses, as you would see coming away from a major intersection that you, that is 21st and Mays. All the ser public services are available to the site, um, the extension of which and layout of it will have to be determined by the applicant at the time of development. Um, conformance to the comprehensive plan, this is outside of the established central area, so we just look at the comprehensive plan. Uh, as I noted, it um, identifies the site as appropriate for new employment or commercial uses. Um, that being said, um, knowing that there's commercial uses along Mays Road and they're proposing additional ones as well as there's commercial uses um, on the north side of the property. Something that our comprehensive plan identifies is using some, using some higher density residential as a means to buffer um, commercial uses from lower density residential with the understanding that if in the future this property is ever redeveloped, there could be higher intensity commercial uses along Mays Road in the future as well. Overall, staff is recommending approval subject to conditions. Um, and one of them is the um, approved text or the recommended text within the staff report. There's just really some um, minor changes to the uh, standard language that we like to see in there. Um, no major disagreements between us and the applicant. Um, again, the condition of requiring the installation of a stop sign on West Lawn at the intersection of Stony Point. Uh, staff has heard quite a bit of uh, public comment on this. I emailed you yesterday my um, com compilation of emails. There was one support email in there. It was kind of tucked in the middle, um, if you didn't catch that. Uh, again, general concerns of uh, possible uh, property value changes, um, a lot of conversation about traffic, and I will leave those for the individuals who are here today to, um, to speak on that. So uh, this will be going to the District Advisory Board on Monday, uh, June 6th. I'm already talking about December. Is it Christmas yet? Um, Monday, June 6th, uh, District 5, so we don't have any input from them. And I can stand for any questions you might have. Any questions of staff? I've got one. Yes, Philip, uh, you mentioned they would have to infill uh, a screen fence along the west property line there. Do, do you know if the existing... Existing lots in there, are they all pretty much the same type of fencing now? It's it's all wood right now. Okay. Um, and like I said, yeah, most of the gaps are actually on the, the south side. Uh, we could actually go through the site pictures if, if for a moment you'll see uh, where some of them are. This is looking at the church property, looking to the west. Next picture. So it's looking to the north. This is a self-storage unit um, in the commercial development along Mays Road or along 21st Street. Next picture. This is also looking north as a gymnasium, kind of a dance studio. Next picture. This is looking to the northeast. This is a church across the street and some single family residential. Next picture. This is looking to the east. This is a insurance building right there. Next picture. This is looking uh, to the southwest. These are the medical offices that are just south of the church uh, property. Next picture. This is looking uh, at what would be parcel three. You can see the existing wood fence that is along the west property line. Um, and it is all pretty much your standard wood privacy fence uh, along the way. There's really not a lot of variation other than the color based on when it was actually installed and how weathered it is. So if somebody's fence falls down, the, this, they will this be developer would have to replace that and they're that okay with correct. that? That is correct. Uh, let's keep going. Next picture. Uh, this is looking north. This is, again, parcel three. This is the commercial development along 21st Street. Next picture. This is looking to the southwest. This is the PUD property with a mixture of commercial uses. Next picture. This is looking due south. You can kind of hard to see, but there's some fences here, but you can also see where there's some gaps, mostly on the south property line. Next picture. And again, the west property line of parcel four is pretty contiguous with, with um, wooden fences as it is. Next picture. And this is looking due west along West Lawn. You can see this is where the stop sign would be installed. Um, this is all platted right of way here. Any additional questions? Yes, Ms. Foster. Ms. Foster. Looks like that's all asphalt. Yes. The stop looks like a picture where I can see there's a lot of places that could be happening. If that were required to be another form of 
address toward base road, would there be requirements for that to be upgraded to something different? Or could the asphalt serve even the additional My asphalt? understanding is if it's just an access easement, that would be something the owner would have to determine if they want to um, beef up the paving. The only time it would officially have to be upgraded would be if it was an actual street dedication, then it would have to be constructed to city standards. Okay. Ms. Foster? That's almost my question. Um, <coughs> as this PUD is developed, I gather that these parcels are being established. Has it been discussed as an option to create right-of-way to connect West Lawn to Mays? And is that a reasonable thing from staff's perspective? <coughs> I think the question boils down to reasonableness of if it can be accomplished with an access easement to provide, since the road already exists, the, the private drive already exists, whether or not it can be accomplished knowing the um, dedication and construction of right of way is, well, the dedication is inexpensive, but it then takes it from private property to public property, but the construction of private street to city standards and the cost. So you're kind of looking at the, the proportion of what would be asked of and uh, my understanding from traffic engineering is their, their first thought process was, well, let's look for the access easement versus going that much farther step of um, requiring street <coughs> dedication. And I think it actually boils down to questionable on if that's proportionate, the request is proportionate given the, the zone change. Um, and that really just boils down to a, the legal question of whether or not that's within the realms of the governing body if they can require something of that extent. Mr. Green. <coughs> I noticed that we've got uh, <coughs> traffic that has weighed in on this. Um, I'm concerned about the uh, number of duplexes that are going to be built in this area. Um, has fire department uh, been notified and do, have they uh, advised uh, anybody on their opinions of, of what's going on here. The, the reason why I, I ask is because it looks like parcel three is, is a dead end and uh, with the potential of having 32 residences in there, 16 duplexes, and then with only one way in. Um, and then parcel four has 52 residences in there, potential, with... Uh, uh, one way in, it's a loop, so concerns, some of those concerns could be alleviated, but if there's an issue at the first two duplexes, well then everybody's blocked in down there at the south end, so I think if fire department has not been uh, brought into the discussion on this, it should probably be one of the requirements. So to address some of those, the private drives would have to be built to the standards of the subdivision regulations, which require um, fire <coughs> turnaround. Um, they're allowed to have dead end uh, streets. I think of there's some duplex developments off of 37th Street that are one way in and there's a hammerhead at the back. Uh, and so the they would just have to be able to accommodate um, fire apparatus to give them an the, the place to turn around. Um, when it comes to emergency access, the entire site has two points of access off of Mays and off of West Lawn. So that satisfies two points of access given the number of dwelling units that are going to be potentially uh, developed. Any other questions, staff? Seeing none, applicant or agent. Good afternoon, Russ A.V. Boffman Company, agent for the applicant again. Um, and my apologies for probably not having all the answers to a lot of these questions. Uh, I'm pinch hitting here today for Phil. But uh, having worked on this project for the last few months, I just uh, want to address a few things that uh, came up in the staff presentation, as well as some things that came in here just uh, lately with the Q&A. And I'll start there. So again, when the church was built, Think of these uh, primary drives that lead out to Mays Road from West Lawn. Uh, these are built to a higher standard than most similar commercial parking lots. Think of uh, the standards that a, a development would, uh, would make in their kind of their internal collector system. Uh, think of New Market Square just to the north. So those look and function quite like 
public streets. However, they're not in uh, right of way, uh, but they are built to handle that heavier truck or handle heavier truck traffic, let alone just uh, cars and vans and pickup trucks that you see here at a church. So that those were built, designed and built to carry a heavy church load. Uh, and we feel um, in working with uh, Mr. Armour here in the last few uh, weeks uh, to, to come to that resolution that we feel that the existing paving uh, substructure is more than adequate to handle this type of traffic, uh, <coughs> modest traffic increase. I will say that any type of asphalt patching or, or milling and overlay would be handled between an agreement between the church and uh, Mr. Norris, the contract buyer of the property. So that along with the cross lot circulation uh, easement, which again is probably the easiest, most straightforward and simple uh, tool to use to provide access out to Mays Road through the church parcel and to, to mitigate any type of, or at least diffuse whatever uh, traffic increase there, there would uh, or potentially be. Uh, I know that um, I came here with a lot of questions about whether or not the gate stays open or closed. Uh, we're obviously, we're clearly fine, and it's up to the determination of the tr city of Wichita to uh, inst install any type of traffic control devices like a stop sign. And it would also be a negotiation with the city, uh, Public Works, to determine whether or not we can close off a public street. Uh, it may be a situation that ultimately that hammerhead, that cul-de-sac, that dedicated cul-de-sac gets vacated and the property line ends at that west line uh, to which the gate can be closed. Not necessarily fully in our control to be able to control uh, and gate across the public right-of-way. So just a few notes on, on that traffic uh, that traffic issue per se. Uh, we're in agreement with staff comments, including the ones that uh, 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 are provided in the staff report. I would say that just um, it's a unique design, certainly it's a unique property. Uh, the church had envisioned, uh, my understanding is that the church had envisioned expansion at this location and chose to expand new church sites throughout Cedric County, uh, which we've been happy to be a part of. So in looking at this uh, acreage, uh, we would think to expect to be able to plat some 100, 110 single family homes, which would be a net increase of about 30% in dwelling units. So as zoned, I mean, this property could function in almost the entirely similar situation as it comes to, as it, as it relates to traffic. The locations uh, that we would expect uh, streets to intersect with Mays Road would be similar. Uh, and of course, the, the west uh, lawn uh, egress to the west would obviously uh, was obviously a platting requirement for a number of decades. So again, we don't think that anything uh, in this proposal is out of the norm, would create any adverse impacts. And really what we're left with here, quite frankly, are the same arguments against these types of projects that we've heard year in and year out, probably decade in, decade out, uh, as it relates to homeowner values uh, related to, to duplex uh, development. And uh, I will also state um, and be corrected by the applicants or by the clients if I'm wrong, but you know the church has been searching for and working with developers for this type of project uh, for over six months, uh, and they have done due diligence to pick the right developer, with, uh, a developer that they feel would best serve uh, uh, the needs of the neighborhood as well as the church, uh, and uh, that will be an, a developer-owned. Um, the parcels three and four will be developer owned and developer uh, built, obviously. And so the church, uh, in their agreement with the developer, I think also lends a little credence to the fact that these aren't going to be uh, necessarily investment uh, duplexes that are going to be split and sold off and kind of come, become frayed at the edges, if you will. So, again, unified development, I think that we've tried to account for in the PUD language all the contingencies and things that we would expect from a similar type of development. And I'll stand for any questions that you may have. Yes, sir. Your staff mentioned uh, as far as the units themselves having some variety. Is that part of this proposal at all? So what we have, uh, Mr. Hartman, is uh, the standard, very standard language with architectural control that it be uh, similar in nature and reviewed by the planning department, I guess. Uh, we have it in the PUD for the planning director to, to make that review. They're looking for the planning department um, to make that review. I know in prior 
duplex recently uh, approved duplex cases that the city has some infill guidelines for duplexes. Unfortunately, uh, those uh, those set of guidelines do not apply to all areas of Wichita and Sedgwick County. Uh, we have, quite frankly, the, the my my experience with those guidelines. I don't see that this is going to uh, be outside of the bounds of what the city um, placed in those guidelines. So we would be more than happy for an architectural review by planning department. Uh, we feel like we meet those guidelines, although they're not applicable to this particular site. Any other questions? Ms. Foster? Not in this staff. Can you address drainage? You're going to have to get the mic. Do I have to go to the mic? Yeah. <laughs> Also need to make it's gardening all weekend. No, no, no. Tired. Make no miss one, of, one of the questions in one of the letters we received addressed drainage. Would you care to mention any response to that? Thank you. I would absolutely love to. Uh, no, uh, drainage is probably the easier uh, question to answer uh, in this particular development. So. Um, typically, we, we, we always see kind of a southeastern gradient on drainage, but this particular site drains to the northeast. Uh, you see the ponding uh, system that is on the east edge of the, the, uh, of the uh, church property. What you don't see is to the, to the, uh, to the, along the north property line and then cutting back to the southwest, that's a drainage channel. That's why we're not bringing that street up to connect on the north. There is a significant uh, drainage way uh, that comes uh, and loops around to that ma major pond. And actually the entire development, about 90% of this development drains to the north, northeast. There's a small area, if you kind of see uh, where parcel three, uh, uh, the, the title of parcel three is in the northwest corner. There's a small section uh, there that would drain to the northwest corner. And if you can kind of barely see off uh, right there, that's part of a reserve in that, re in that residential area. So there's a, uh, probably 10% of that northwest corner drains to the northwest. This is all part, uh, as is the subdivision to the west, all part of an approved drainage plan system uh, that we intend to follow. Uh, I will point out, uh, I, I know Commissioner Green, as well as the, the drainage question, and some of these other uh, questions about uh, easements and things of that nature. This property will either be replatted. I think most likely we are going to uh, ap apply for a lot split. Uh, so a lot of these questions about fire access, drainage, uh, a revisiting of the drainage plan and things, and things of that nature will be reviewed a second time during that lot split process in order to make this project happen. And I also know that a few weeks ago, uh, Phil and the church uh, hosted a, a neighborhood meeting uh, and did a presentation. I'm not sure if staff uh, was at that uh, smart, uh, <laughs> uh, but um, it was an opportunity to at least uh, put this forward to the neighborhood. Uh, this is an extensive ownership list. We went a thousand feet uh, from the perimeter, obviously, of, of the, the church site and, um, and received quite a bit of public input, some of which you have uh, available via emails, and I'm sure uh, there will be several people to speak. Um, Any other questions? Is there any on-site management for this number of units? Or I do not have that answer. I do not have that answer. I think this would be a staff question. Will this need to either go through a lot split or a replatting uh, to ensure that some of the concerns that we have with the drainage and the easements and uh, fire access. At a minimum, it would have to do a lot split to create that. the separate parcels okay. that are reflected on the PUD. Like, yeah, at a minimum, a lot split. Okay, so it doesn't need to be included in any of the PUD language at this? Correct. Okay, thank you. Where I would say if, if it's leaning towards a, a cross-lot easement, that would probably be something worth considering of putting in. But in terms of addressing fire and access and drainage, that would be reviewed during lot split and things like that. We're going to be required to do a lot split one way or the other. Uh, the church has no intention of being the, the master developer of, of any of this or the master manager of, of the, even the parcel to the commercial 
item. So we have no problem if that's included as a condition of approval to, to be approved for either a, a, a replot or a lot split. Uh, likewise, with the cross-lot access easement, that's probably something that we would expect to be in the PUD as well. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you. Anyone here in the chamber want to speak on this item? Please come forward and give us your name and your address, and you'll have three minutes. You need to make note that Mr. Nix has left the meeting. Okay. My name is Stephen Waymeyer. Uh, 10409 Westport, uh, adjoining street to the development. Um, as has been mentioned, the uh, traffic concern. Um, I am concerned about traffic increase through our neighborhood unnecessarily. Um, as mentioned earlier, the uh, cross street, West Lawn, on the south side of uh, the one uh, would greatly reduce the amount of traffic that would exit to the west. They would have direct access to Mays. And I would just like to request that a condition of use be included that would require that easement for public access through that west lawn. And it's also been noted by the previous speaker that that road has been upgraded or at least was developed to handle the traffic so that would be one request um, and also and this may be included automatically but i'd like to my concern would be that any development expenses or um, anything required for public service or uh, development of utilities, whatever, for this development would be incurred entirely by the, uh, the applicant or the developer expense and not require any assessment, special assessment, to any of the surrounding neighborhoods that exist today. And I'd like to, if it's appropriate, request that a condition of use be included that would ensure that the developer or applicant or whoever be responsible for all those expenses. Okay. That's all. Hang on. I've got a question. Uh, I'm just curious. How many times do you actually exit the main road through that area? And the reason I ask is there a consideration of the gate across that so that everywhere there has to go out through the curb path? Would that be a problem for you? Well, I live on the street just to the south of the development on Westport. So, so I don't go through that development at all. And my concern was that if, if there was not a public access through that West Lawn on the south side of the church, if that's not guaranteed, then they'll be coming through our neighborhood unnecessarily, or at least gotcha. in my opinion. Okay, thank you. And the concern would be that the church, I believe, has goodwill to ensure that that remains in access. But if they sell the property, I'd like it to be a condition of use okay. for Thank approval. You. Thank that you. That access be. Great. Any other questions, to speaker? Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. I'm Teresa Bricknell. I live at 10613 Westport. Um, I hope I can explain a little bit more about the traffic. Uh, let me give you a little history. I do live on Westport almost 20 years. It is horrible. We have speeders. We have people running through the, the we actually have a curve, but people just tend to go straight. Um, we just, we've had a lot of wrecks. Luckily, the city did, we petitioned them several years ago, they did put a, a turn lane and a median on Mays Road. It actually, the housing west and east of Mays Road feed into there. Um, our own association has had to put a median in. People have put in trees. The city has put in 30 trees. Uh, we put in rocks so they don't go through our yard. And the traffic has just increased and increased um, speeding, and it backs up. Um, I appreciate that you want to put a stop sign, but it's still, it's, you're, the only way to get out of there 
is they're going to have to go in Stony Point, come south, go out Westport, which traffic backs up. You can't get out of your driveway. Or they're going to go north on Stony Point, Parkdale, and out that way. 21st is almost as bad to get out of. Um, that's our concern is the whole, you start adding another 91 units, that's an 180 cars plus, um, they're not manageable now. And um, so that's what we just wanted to, to stress that um, it's a big for the area. Actually those homes, and it's not even on this map, if you can go further west, there's homes in there, I used to live there, use Westport to get out. So it's not just we're talking about those 91 homes getting out. It's a big traffic problem already. Um, that's what we wanted to point out. I think everybody else, the, the church parking lot, I don't know. That, that was some of my question, and I'm glad people are addressing fire and police. Um, the other thing, and I appreciated some of the pictures, but I think some of the pictures don't really give a, a real picture of what we're looking at. And we don't feel like these are going to fit into our neighborhood. These are going to be about 11, 1,200 square feet. They're slab homes. They're stacked in there. I personally have 1,600 square feet up and down, so I have 3,200 square feet. Those are the homes in that area. They're nicely landscaped, mature trees. Uh, we just don't feel like it fits in the neighborhood. And we also, most people in there, ours, we can't have rentals. And we don't really want to back up to rentals. <laughs> and there is one, it's, um, I believe it's Sunridge too, that does allow rentals, but they are houses. And they were built as a house with a basement, the view of the lake. So we also are concerned about how it's going to change their neighborhood, the appearance. Um, and also, the, I know, I'm not affected, I don't back up, but a lot of these houses, I know all the pictures they were taking were from the church out. But you I need am. pictures from, they go from the other way. Your time's you know. up. Can okay. you conclude? All right, I appreciate you listening. Hang on. Let's see if anybody's got any questions. Any questions of speaker? Thank you. Okay. Next speaker, please. Hi, I'm Lynette Dooling, uh, 1903 North Mays Road which would be for DOBA um, property holdings. It is the three acres. Can to, you speak into my Sorry, point? it is the three acres to the east of the property that was a, has a PUD that was done about two years ago. Um, the notification that we received is the first notice that we actually found out about any of this. Um, so today is the first time I've actually seen the map of what's going on. Um, and so I do have questions. I don't know who to ask. So um, one thing was, there's no setback that's on the, I guess that's the east line for them, into our property. So is that addressed in the, I don't know, in the PUD, I guess. Um, we're not against an access easement coming into our property off the back, but we didn't talk to anybody. So um, that's one of the questions that we have is, what is the drainage of this due to us and our property? Our property is not developed. It's basically still vacant as it was, um, but for future development, we don't know what is going to happen with this. So um, so I guess that's our questions. We just didn't know. We had no idea. So um, we would like to maybe talk to somebody to see what's going on and I, I guess talk about the access off the backside that could affect us. So. Any questions of the speaker? Thank you. Good. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Wiebe. I live at 10606 Westport. I'm the president of the HOA of Wynwood that borders on the south side of this property. Over the years, we have been fighting traffic. Um, we have dozens and dozens of children along Westport back in the cul-de-sacs. I am not one in favor of getting one of those little kids hit by a car. We have traffic morning noon and night. We have six buses that stop at my corner and pick up children, take them to school, and they drop them off anywhere from 2, 2.30 to 5, 5.30 at night. 
the increase in traffic would put a huge detriment to this street. That traffic right now is just unbelievable. We had police officers out and they've ran some radars, they've run, um, they've come to me and we've talked. And back in 2001, we got a city grant and we put in 30 trees. We put in a new median to slow this traffic down and to close in the wide open spaces. It has worked to a point. That point is now gone. Traffic is twice as bad as it was 20 years ago, and I think it's going to get worse. The, the build of these duplexes, we don't see a problem with it as long as it doesn't get to the trashy point. We like to maintain our neighborhood, our neighborhoods, and I know Timber Creek is just as concerned as I am. Um, if there's anything that we can do to slow this traffic down and make this project happen, we're all for it. But we need to slow this traffic down, and we need to do it now rather than later. Thank you. Any questions, the Speaker? Ms. Fox. So do you use access out of the church, and would a gate across that access at West Lawn Street cause trouble if everyone in this section had to go out toward Mace Road? I do not use that. That's um, from your neighbor, from your president standpoint. Do you know if people do the, use that? It's not used as a street from yeah. our okay. from our end of it. Um, if they would go out to Mays Road, that would put even more traffic on Mays Road. On it's Mays already Road. like Rock Road now. So, any other okay. questions? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, please. Is there anybody virtual want to speak on this item? Anybody virtual? Hearing that. Oh, hello, yes. There's a chat. Go ahead. Hello, this, this is Nathaniel Hofer, 1926 North Stony Point Street. And um, once again, I would like to echo my concerns on the traffic. Um, and I live uh, just east or ju uh, just west of parcel four. And so, you know, the, this, this parcel would be right behind my property. And um, with the traffic, I, I will say that having a gate um, to force traffic through the easement would help, you know, in, in that regards. But um, I would still echo the, the difficulties that it will be to get onto May Street, um, you know, even you know, even through the uh, residential streets and likewise 21st. Anything else, sir? Nope, that is it. Thank you. Any questions to the speaker? Thank you, sir. Anybody else virtual want to speak on this item? Anybody else? Hearing none, two minutes to rebuttal. Oh, Scott. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I apologize. Uh, we've got a, someone put, entered something into the chat and it says, it's from Pamela, I requested the zoning, I requested the zoning not be changed. The proposed development would produce too much traffic through, throughout the neighborhood and the already congested intersection of Mays and 21st. If the zoning change and development is approved, I would like to request that access to Stony Point be blocked, forcing all the traffic in the development to be directed towards Mays Road. So as a, another public comment, we uh, discourage and we usually turn off the chat function, so I'm kind of surprised that it's on now. But since we got one, I, I figured I'd better read it to you. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Russ Avey, uh, agent for the applicant again on rebuttal. Uh, just a few uh, quick comments and, and um, so uh, again, obviously we knew going in that traffic was going to be a unique uh, situation. Uh, as with a lot of zoning cases, especially one of perhaps this moderate magnitude, you tend to uh, be the straw that breaks the camel's back. So there's been obviously, and I've got my in-laws live off of Westport in this neighborhood, so I'm well aware of, of the neighborhood. Uh, and obviously at, West Point, at Westport and Mays Road, there are 
you need to wait for traffic gaps, and those gaps come fewer and fewer. Uh, having said that, these larger system-wide issues, like traffic on our arterial roadways, have been simmering probably for decades. And when somebody proposes something along the lines of this PUD, it shines a light on the existing problem and not necessarily the fact that we may or may not be creating an additional problem or the relative nature of what we're going to be adding to the existing problem. And I just want to point out for the record that these things are larger issues that Public Works needs to take a look at. 20 years ago, we had that experience uh, when I lived off of Rock Road and Oxford Circle where it was a quarter mile traffic signal uh, was the solution there. We had a church across the street, a lot of apartments, uh, a, a large array of mixed uh, residential types all coming to Rock Road at the same intersection. That warranted, after a review by city engineering, uh, for signalization. Whether Westport meets those types of warrants for traffic signal, I don't have that answer for it. Um, but there again, I don't feel, as I've mentioned prior, that this particular uh, PUD adds or subtracts uh, to a significant degree any of the issues that are present today. Uh, and as I mentioned also, the existing land use uh, or the existing zoning uh, of this property would have lent itself to an even more, uh, num an increased number of, of dwelling units and therefore an increased number of of trips per unit. Uh, there was one lady who is adjacent uh, to our, our panhandle down there who had the, the, the old excavation company site uh, in the PUD. Just wanted to clarify, we are not interacting with her property whatsoever. Okay. And I'll stand for any, any questions, questions that you may have. Do you agree you would consider design standards so that something more compatible to the neighborhood might be considered rather than just bull nose? Your, or architectural, I'm sorry. Certainly. Okay. Any other questions? I've got one. Russ, did you say that you were going to provide a private drive easement through that south drive? Is that part of the... It'll probably be a cross lot access, so okay. people may be able to go northeast on the north side of the church. Obviously, that south one is a little bit more principal. I mean, it looks like a more primary location that goes swoops to the south and then back up uh, to Bella Vista, is it Bella Vista? Uh, Street, that intersection. We would be able to disperse it between two. Whether we overlay that drive with an easement, uh, which is a little bit more cumbersome, obviously, as you know, from a surveying standpoint and legal description creation standpoint. Otherwise, we would just agree privately through a cross-lot access agreement. And that agreement usually also has terms for maintenance and long-term repair of that street. So, so there again, uh, we'd be more than happy and, and quite frankly expect to have done that on our own. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. We'll bring it back to board. What's a pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that, that we approve uh, the PUD as uh, submitted um, and add a requirement for a uh, cross-lot agreement uh, to be negotiated between the developers of this property and the church. So I'll a motion I'll to approve with a cross-lot agreement. I'll second that. Second by Mr. Hartman. Any discussion? I, all the uh, responses related to traffic, et cetera, it's absolutely true. This northwest part of town is growing so rapidly. But I also just want to say that the use of the excess property around churches is an incredible way for us to add uh, affordable housing opportunities in our community, which are so desperately needed. We're only about 50,000 housing units short in which to handle our workforce. And so I'd like just to add that comment um, with the trying to accommodate the traffic through the um, uh, church parking lot. I think that helps come up with some compromise. And I do know that with the uh, platting process where they'll really look at drainage, that's seriously understood as an important factor uh, in the development of these areas, as well as traffic out onto Mays Road. So, um, Pathway, you're kind of a trendsetter in terms of seeing this as a way to add some housing in our community, which is sorely needed, and uh, appreciate the openness to creating that path out of your uh, property. Any other comments? 
Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Passes 11 0. Next item 4.6 BUD 2022 0011. Good afternoon again, Philip Ziebenbergen, for the record. PUD 2211 is a zone change request from single family residential to planned unit development to create a custom zoning opportunity for multifamily development on property on the south side of North McLean Boulevard, about a half mile west of North Seneca. As we already discussed with the vacation, um, you're pretty well aware of where the location is. Interesting note about this, and just this is for background information, the um, sale of the property from the city to the private developer was approved by city council. However, the, it has not closed. So the city uh, is still in retention of the property, but they are working through the ownership change and it is in the hands of the developer as to when they choose to close on this property. But the sale of it to a private um, individual was approved by the city um, about a month and a half ago. That being said, the uh, plan unit development would create two parcels. If you go to the um, PUD drawing uh, a couple of sides, slides ahead. And the uh, purpose of this is to construct uh, multifamily residential. You can see there's some um, triplexes or quadplexes, um, something similar to like a townhouse type of development. Um, as we discussed before, uh, Millwood being in the middle, which um, is uh, Currently on the table for approval, it would have to go to city council for final approval, of course, along with this PUD. Um, you would have access off of Vine, uh, which has directs us off of McLean um, to access parcel one. You would also have access off of Fern Street um, to access parcel two. Uh, in order to accomplish this development, they're asking for a, some relief in the setback requirements of the zoning code, and that is to allow the dwelling units to uh, be built closer to McLean Boulevard uh, than they would the residential development uh, south of it or towards St. Louis Street. Um, your staff report discusses what those uh, setbacks are based on what two family residential would uh, permit. The biggest one being um, zero foot setbacks on the rear um, and then uh, 10 foot setbacks for the front and the sides. Um, and that again is just to allow them to uh, accommodate the amount of space they need in order to park this development um, as well as for necessary things like screening and landscaping requirements and things like that which we will discuss as well. The density of this um, TF3 permits 14.5 dwelling units an acre. Um, parcel 1 would uh, have 11 dwelling units an acre. Parcel 2 would have 18.45 so that doesn't necessarily create a wash if you're to average them out, but nothing necessarily over and above what TF3 would normally require. Parcel two is a little bit more in line with MF18 zoning, but this is a PUD and they can set the zoning or set the density um, however they would want to. Um, the reason the density uh, looks higher on parcel two is it is a smaller parcel um, or it, it's a little bit smaller of a parcel and they're looking for a couple more dwelling units. It's a, it's a little bit more linear in terms of how they can get their access. The height requirement is gonna be at 35 feet, which is what is in SF5 and TF3, so they're not asking for taller buildings than what can be built on the surrounding residential properties as it is. Uh, something to make note of is the property on parcel two has a platted 25 foot building setback um, that would have to be vacated before development on that parcel um, can go forward. The zoning setbacks within a PUD do not trump platted setbacks. And so that's just something that they would have to take care of. It was not part of the vacation request with the right of way. It's something that would, they would have to do in the future in order to develop as they would like to within the PUD on parcel two. Uh, the parking for this, the typical parking requirements for uh, multifamily is 1.25 spaces for one bedroom units or 1.75 spaces for two bedroom units or larger. Um, the PUD proposes 19 multi-bedroom dwellings um, and a total of 34 parking spaces. Um, the general provision two of the PUD requires 23 offsite parking spaces shall be provided, not counting driveways and garages. As you can see on the plan, the 
Eastern eight dwelling units provide a garage and a driveway. So when you can count all of those together, you get an additional um, 16 spaces for a total of 39 parking spaces to actually meet their parking requirement um, without actually having to ask for a reduction of that. Uh, signs and architectural controls, um, they have architectural controls to, um, which will have to be compatible with the Delano neighborhood design guidelines. This is within the Delano neighborhood overlay. So when it comes to compatibility of what the building looks like in relation to the surrounding houses, that has to go before the review committee um, before they can get any building permits. So when it comes to architectural compatibility, there really um, is no concern from that, from staff's perspective. Um, and then signs are what are permitted in TF3. And so um, that's not asking for anything additional there as well. Screening and landscaping. There's several things that are going to need uh, to provide here. They're going to need a landscape street yard and parking lot screening installed along the boundaries of parcel one and two, along the Millwood right-of-way and along McLean Boulevard. So whether or not McLean or Millwood is vacated at this point, there is still a portion of the property that is along the Millwood right-of-way. So they would need landscaping here, landscaping here, landscaping all along McLean, as well as both Fern and Vine. In addition, that's just the landscape street yard and parking lot screening. In addition to landscape buffers, anywhere they have a property line shared with residential structures or the residential zoning um, in that carve out, they have to provide a landscape buffer. That's one tree per 40 linear feet. Um, in addition to that, um, staff is recommending and is part of a condition of approval that street trees be planted along North McLean Boulevard. Um, that would technically be in the right of way, but part of this is, is the site currently is city owned property. Um, it has approximately 40 uh, fairly mature trees on it. These trees have existed since the 90s when the uh, city acquired the property for the expansion of McLean Boulevard. Um, with the landscaping, um, this would provide uh, the opportunity to replace some of those trees in, in addition to the street trees. So trying to re recoup um, some of the loss of the tree coverage on the site with the landscaping requirements, not only in the zoning ordinance, but the additional requirement for street trees. You want to go to the zoning map. Property surrounding, ooh, jumped, you're in a subdivision case. There you go. There you go. Properties surrounding it are predominantly zoned single family residential. There is some two family residential directly south along Fern. Um, most of these houses are developed with single family homes. However, there are a couple duplexes in the area. Um, there is one property directly to the west across the street on Vine that is general office and it is an office building. Um, in addition to some general office that is along McLean Boulevard as you get closer to Seneca. So something of more intense use along um, McLean is not necessarily abnormal uh, in this area of town. There's a pretty extensive case history of just how this all became to be uh, with the platting and things. I'm not gonna go into those details. Uh, and then um, public services, there are, uh, these are all local streets. Por a portion of St. Louis on the western portion of it is gravel. Um, as we said before, there would only be access off of McLean and you have those direct drives into the property from Vine as well as Fern. Uh, the mill would right of way up the middle would actually provide access in the middle as well. Um, M Meridian, or Meridian, McLean Boulevard does have a sidewalk along it and because it was city property when they put the sidewalk in, it's pretty curvilinear right now and actually we'll go over what will be the property line of this. It is, there's text in the PUD that do require, that does require the replacement of the sidewalk along McLean. It will just be straightened out a little bit more, um, but the sidewalk will be retained. There are no sidewalks along um, Millwood, Fern, or Vine. Um, but staff is recommending but not requiring that the applicant install sidewalks on Vine and Fern for the boundary of the PUD. Um, so that would be basically along this boundary here and this boundary here to provide kind of a pedestrian 
access into the neighborhood. And as we heard with the vacation case, if that is approved, there would be an access easement through the middle to get to the sidewalk um, where Millwood currently is right now. Staff finds that it's in conformance with the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan identifies it as appropriate for residential development as well as open space. Um, if you wanna to go to the uh, comprehensive plan slide for me. So a portion of it is in um, conformance, but the western side where it's, it's designated for uh, open space is not. The other um, plan that we looked at is the Delano Neighborhood Plan, which is what is on the screen in front of you. And the Delano Neighborhood Plan, which was updated fairly recently, um, identifies the site as appropriate for residential uses as well. Um, going back to the comprehensive plan, if we dive a little bit deeper into the um, compatibility and the, de uh, the development pattern for the established central area, um, it promotes development that maximizes public investment with existing and planned infrastructure services. So this is another opportunity where there's existing infrastructure that we can take advantage of that is overall less burden on the city when development happens versus going out to uh, the extents of the city and, and growing the city laterally versus focusing on infill development. Um, when you can think about land use compatibility within the established central area, it talks about high density residential uses can be appropriate along arterial streets on small infill sites near residential uses if appropriate site design features are included to limit traffic, noise, lighting, and adverse impacts on surrounding residential properties of the site. Uh, there's no direct access to McLean, but as I said before, they're gonna be coming on McLean and going directly into the drives on Fern and Vine. Um, you have 35 foot structures, which is permitted in SF5 and TF3. Um, and you're gonna have the site design features of the Delano neighborhood overlay, which requires architectural compatibility. And you're also having screening and landscaping along the boundaries of it to help minimize those impacts of the visual impact of the parking lot, as well as any exterior lighting or things like that. Um, similarly, um, that it, small multifamily developments are appropriate in existing residential areas. Um, if the building are compatible with the existing residential, and I talked about with the Delano neighborhood overlay, there's gonna be the architectural compatibility. The Wichita Places for People Plan, um, this ident uh, is in conformance with strategy number five, of providing a diversity of housing options. Uh, you also have the current condition being a um, area of opportunity, which calls for strategic investment in the ECA um, to uh, promote reinvestment and um, vitality in the area. Overall, staff is recommending approval subject to the conditions in your staff report. Again, we are only uh, recommending, not requiring um, the addition of the sidewalks, but what the requirements are, um, <coughs> Is that it follow the uh, revised PUD text that's in the staff report or any modifications in the, during the planning commission? Um, and that they plant uh, street trees along McLean at one tree per 40 linear feet. Um, and that uh, the platted setbacks on parcel two have to be vacated before the issuance of building permits on parcel two. Um, we can go through the site pictures. We jump ahead to those. So. I work from the west and I go east, so bear with me here where I, I try to just go into a linear fashion here. So we're on the very west portion of the site. We're looking east. This is the existing driveway off of Vine looking into the portion of the lot that would be de um, developed with the actual houses. So the um, dwelling units would be more on this side of it. You'd have parking more on this side. This is St. Louis Street right here. So you have access into here. You have parking along this side and dwelling units over on this side. Next picture. Uh, this is looking to the southeast, so that's that same driveway. This is St. Louis Street. This is uh, residential development south of St. Louis. Next picture. This is the office building that's directly west on Vine. Um, this is the general office on property. It's a chiropractic clinic. Next picture. This is the existing sidewalk on McLean as we're walking to the east. Uh, you can see, again, it's a fairly curvilinear in nature and it would likely just have to be straightened out um, if this development goes forward where it will eventually cross whatever is established as that property line from the right-of-way line. Next picture. This is uh, North McLean. If you're familiar with it, all of these trees are lining the Arkansas River. 
Um, and so there's really no development on the north side. It's just all focused on the south. Next picture. This is looking down Millwood in the middle of the site. Uh, next picture. This is looking to the southwest. Uh, this is still Millward right away. This is kind of a drive access into the middle of the site. These are existing trees that actually already kind of provide some sort of buffering from existing residential. If any of those trees are on this property, it would have to be removed. They obviously have to be replaced with the landscape buffer per the landscape ordinance. Next picture. This is looking uh, due west um, on parcel one. Next picture. This is looking to the southeast at the south side of parcel two. Uh, this is one of the existing houses. There would have to be screening installed by the applicant as well as there would be a landscape buffer along this whole property line on parcel two. Next picture. This is looking east on parcel two. Um, you'd have access through here. Parking would be over here and your dwelling units would be um, built on the northern portion of the parcel. Next picture. This is um, walking along McLean as we go down parcel two. Next picture. This is Fern Street looking to the southeast with the residential that's directly across the street. This is the access drive on Fern onto the site. Next picture. And that is it. Any um, questions to staff? A couple more comments. Oh. It will be going to district advisory board at a mid-month meeting for district six. Um, so we don't have any comments from them. I have heard um, public comment from individuals. I know Mr. Uh, Harold is online. Um, I've heard, spoken with him as well, um, and I can stand for any questions. Ms. Foster. Hang around until if I gotta show pictures. Can you put up the uh, slide with the PUD parcel one and parcel two site plan? I'm sorry, I just noticed this, but back in our vacation case that we just did earlier, the line, south line of the vacation goes straight across from the south line of parcel two. This shows this little notch also being part of the vacation, which wasn't part of our vacation. And normally, a vacation goes from the property line out to the center line, which means this little corner would also be included in parcel one. So I'm just confused and the discrepancy is something that I assume needs to be addressed, and I would just ask that you make note. <laughs> yeah, that can definitely be addressed um, where whatever happens with the vacation case, we'll make sure we have an up-to-date and um, corrected legal description if needed that will accurately describe the portion of the Millwood right-of-way that is being vacated, and then it will be um, correspondingly um, drawn on the PUD drawing to make sure that they match. Any other questions? <clears throat> Applicant or agent? Kirk Miller, K. Miller Engineering, 117 East Lewis. I'm the agent. Um, I can start out by trying to address the right-of-way issue there. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Right. Well, the, the two lots across the street from each other are not the same. They don't line up the north line of those lots. So we're vacating to the north line of that east lot. So it runs straight across. But then the property in parcel one is actually goes further south of that line. Mm -hmm. So that's why it, it doesn't go over to the center line on that west side. That's still public right of way on that west side where that jog is. You say so. I still have <laughs> Okay. Okay, um, you know, this is an infill project and I, I guess there's 50,000 units needed in this, this area for housing. This is 19 of them that we're looking at. Um, this parcel has been vacant for 30 some odd years, I guess. And if you read the staff report, it, it's kind of changed over time as they vacated street to build McLean or they, they bought property to build McLean then they sold some back or they bought McLean, then they bought some back again to widen McLean, and now they're selling some back again because they have all this property over here that they're maintaining that is not on the tax rolls. City maintains it. It's not a park or anything that they can do anything with. Um, it's a difficult parcel to develop. 
because of the size of it and the configuration of it long and narrow. But my clients looked at it and think they can do something with it and this is what we're proposing to do. And I'd be, we're, we're fine with staff comments. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions? Did you plot it for single family to see how many units you could put on and if that would be viable at all? Well, what you'd be stuck with basically is, is one on either side where those driveways are. Because you don't, you, you, you're not gonna wanna access McLean with it. You don't want cars back in Allen McLean. So you're gonna put one on the east end and one, one on the west end where you can see the driveways on there right now. So basically two houses. Big Any yards, other? but it'd be two houses. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else want to speak on this item, please come forward. Give us your name and address. You got three minutes. My name is Vince Hancock. I'm the vice president of the Delano Neighborhood Association. In light of the amount of time that I have, I do not have time to address all the inconsistencies and spelling errors in the staff report, but I do have a few comments for staff. Uh, I do encourage the staff to revisit their sites regularly after they erect the development notice signs. Within a few days of those signs going up on this property, they were destroyed either by contract mowers for the city mowing crews or the 40 mile an hour Kansas winds. So as a result, there were a whole lot of people who had no idea that this was happening because there was no sign. It was flat on the ground, one of the legs was torn off, I couldn't even put it back up. So if you guys would revisit that, that would help your neighbors. The staff report also makes no mention of a traffic engineering study. Site photos make it clear that residents leaving that want to go to the northwest, which is where our closest grocery stores are at, they're going to be forced to make their left turns onto the 40 mile an hour McLean at Vine Street. They can't make a left turn on Fern because there's a median across McLean. Where are the turn traffic counts for those two intersections? And what would uh, those counts rise to be with this development enough to require a traffic signal? We don't know because we didn't ask traffic engineering. Shame on staff. I also have a few questions for staff to research before this reaches the mid-month dab. This property is currently owned by me and you and all of us doing business as the city of Wichita. Which of my city employees is going to tell me how much I'm being offered to sell my green space? What types of monthly rents are being proposed in one of the poorest parts of town? And uh, Member Fox you and I both know this is not going to be affordable housing. This is going to be over $1,000 a month rent, higher than any square footage for anything within 500 yards of this property. A previous applicant bemoans hearing the standard types of complaints about neighbors who are concerned about developers requesting upzoning from single family to multifamily. At the risk of being kept and obvious, if you're tired of hearing those complaints, stop making these types of requests. This is single family for a reason. This is zoned single family and we don't have any MF29 here for a reason. Most of these are single family homes. This PUD in the document says that it will have an underlying zoning of TF3. Why not avoid the appearance of sneakiness and just request TF3? When it's a PUD, you and I both know that that's code for, we don't wanna abide by the existing zoning code, we wanna put in a few special things. And the problem is, it's zero setback. There's a place in our neighborhood for zero setback. It's on our business district, up and down Douglas. There's no business making residential units with zero setback. So I ask that you decline it. Thank you, and I know there will be some online comments as well. I'll Any questions, questions, speaker? Thank yes. you. Does anybody virtual want to speak on this item? I Any would like to speak. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Harold Schlechtweg, and I live at 351 North Fern Street. And last night we had a neighborhood meeting of just within a one block radius of uh, McLean Boulevard. That's who we know, notified. And there, universally, no one who lives in that area, both property owners and renters, neither want to see our green space and our trees, our park-like area there, uh, destroyed by this uh, development. It's gonna have an adverse effect on the neighborhood. Uh, this part of Delano, which I see as running uh, from Seneca to Meridian on, on the west and from Douglas Street North uh, to McLean, it's gonna have a negative impact because many of our folks walk in that area. Uh, 
residents of that area, I should say, are uh, low income. The median family income is about is less than thirty thousand dollars a year. It's one of the least economically well off neighborhoods in the city. Uh, ironically, our residents who are now renting will probably not be able to rent in these apartments. Uh, more than two thirds of the area of the uh, residences in our area are uh, rental. Uh, the property owners who live near this parcel are primarily what I would call legacy. They're folks on social security, uh, many, many on retired and on fixed income. Uh, they're not gonna be assisted by this development. Uh, the opposition, uh, to these apartments is not because it's rental housing. We already have those. Uh, earlier speakers talked about the history of this parcel. Uh, in 1995 or 96, in those years, the city expanded McLean. There were three houses on this parcel. There was one uh, on parcel two, one on parcel one, and then there was one there in the middle where the Millwood uh, called the sack exists now. So there were three houses. The city removed those houses and the residents in this area were told that would remain as green space. In that 30 year period, it's been taken care of by park and recreation. They planted trees in there. They've done a minimal amount of trimming of trees. They removed some trees and they kept the area mowed. So it's something nice in our, in our neighborhood that is going to go away. The 27 years, it's been the way it is. Uh, we would like to see more trees planted there. Delano is losing its trees, and we need to keep all that we have. The idea of planting a tree every 40 feet is a joke. Uh, the best and highest use for that land is continuing to maintain it uh, as a pocket park for the enjoyment of residents and walkers in the neighborhood. Uh, specifically on this application, the application does not comply with the 2019 Delano plan, which zones the entire neighborhood single family residential. The Delano plan states that all planning should include these guiding principles. One, invest in the quality of our community life, and two, take better care of what we already have. And that's certainly what needs to be do there, new do there. And this zoning request violates those guiding policy principles. It Sir? is not an area of opportunity for urban in infill Sir? either, because Sir? development will not reverse decline. Your time's up. Can you? Out of line, out of time. <laughs> All right. Any questions, the speaker? Any questions, the speaker? Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else virtual that wants to speak on this item? Anybody else virtual want to speak on this item? Hearing none, the applicant has some rebuttal time. Two minutes. Just a couple of things I'd like to say. Um, you know, there was the comment about the signage. The signs were put up, and yeah, I'm sure the wind probably did blow them over with the winds we've had. But at the same time, the, the ownership lists are supply, and the city mails out notices. So it's not like the people out there didn't know that this PUD was coming up. And they, they kind of left the, that one speaker kind of left the impression that you didn't, that they didn't know that this was a case that was coming up. And this is actually the first time I've heard somebody say, you're putting something in that's a higher property value than what we already have. Normally it's, this is gonna take down our neighborhood, but they're, they're kind of almost made the argument of, you know, with the, with the rental rates and everything, this is going to prop up our neighborhood. So I'd, I'd kind of like to point that out that this may help as far as property values in the neighborhood help increase them. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you.
We'll bring it back to commission. What's pleasure to the board? I guess I'd just like to make a comment, mainly because I was involved with the development of the Delano plan. And one of the concerns that we had as we developed the Delano plan was the high percentage of rentals in the Delano district. And as we try to uh, reestablish, renew, whatever, uh, the Delano district, if we continue to add more rental properties, that's really going to defeat the purpose of trying to revive that area. And so just a concern that I, that I want to express and whether or not we are then staying where we've been for many years or whether we're actually making advances in um, making that better, that area better. So just wanted to say Does that. Does anybody know if this tract is in the affordable housing plan, like focus areas? Does anybody know that for sure? I don't. I don't believe that it is because I think those are largely focused on uh, the existing locations. Well, but based on the median income, that makes me think it may be the median report reported by the president okay. because that might make it. We might be thinking of two different things. You're okay. The Wichita Affordable Housing Fund. Yeah. Right. The Affordable Housing Fund available to lower income sex census tracts, which might make it possible for single family um, that is affordable in that spot. Anyway, it's a thought. But this property was owned by the city. That's correct. Has it already been sold? The this property was owned by the city. They have approved selling it for a developer. But it's not yet sold? The, it's the, been approved. Okay. Right, the sale has not been finalized. Okay. Got a comment. Uh, I know everybody wants single family or open space next to their house, but you're right on a major thoroughfare here, McLean. You're not going to get anybody to build a single family home here. I see this as a viable option, and I'm I'm uh, in agreement to approve it. Got a motion? Well, if your people can afford, we'll make a motion. We approve home. it. Subject to staff, staff right. comments. Second. Second. Got a motion approved by Mr. Hartman, second by Mr. Green. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? Aye. 10 1. Let me ask you something. Does she need to have some kind of a statement? Not supporting? Okay. Thank you. I'd certainly make a statement. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> Right. All right, next case, zoning case 2022-0023. Good afternoon, uh, Christina Reith, Associate Planner, uh, zoning case 2022-00023. The applicant is Murdoch Properties, LLC, and the agent is the Boffman Company. The property in question is currently zoned SF5 single family residential, and it is uh, about 37.16 acres in size, and they are requesting to turn uh, to a zone change to TF3 two family residential. This property is generally located within one quarter mile south of East Pawnee Road and west of South Webb Road, and they are proposing to allow future development of single family and two family residential homes, and staff is recommending to approve it. Just wanted to point out that this site is located within the Air Force Base Protective Overlay. However, uh, the property development standards should not have any bearing on the zoning change and development. Uh, the requested zoning aligns with the goals of the community investment plan. Uh, the map identifies the area. Oh, could we, sorry, could we go to the uh, future growth concept map, please? So I just wanted to point out that this is a uh, new residential area. So the map identifies the area in which the site is located to me primarily appropriate for residential uses and defines residential uses as a variety of housing types, including duplexes. Um, and then I want to zoom to, or go to the, um, the zoning map, please. So 
So most of the uh, subdivisions platted and developed around the area are in use as single family residences. Um, there's also some agricultural land within uh, Sedgwick County. However, within one quarter mile to the northwest on East Pawnee Road, there are several parcels zoned TF3, two family residential. And because of the similarity of residential use, the Unified Zoning Code does not require screening between SF5 and TF3 zoning districts. Um, could we go to the site plan, please? So this is a site plan of the proposed duplex. Um, they are proposing to extend um, Beach Street, uh, Greenleaf Street, and Creed Street that are already platted. Um, I did receive a comment um, a few weeks ago from um, a concerned applicant, and um, he was mostly concerned about uh, the devaluation of his home. Uh, he does not approve the zoning. I did get some questions, but um, nothing explicitly in, or nothing else explicitly in favor or against this development. And I will now stand for questions. I just want to ask you a question because you're new, but I'm not going to ask. A, I don't really have a question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Has this project gone to DAB? Uh, it's scheduled for, ja for DAB 2 on June 13th. Since our chairman has, has been disposed for a moment, if there's no questions for staff, why ask the agent? Yeah, can we have the agent or applicant come forward, please, for a presentation? And you have 10 minutes. And I set the timer, so. And I'm going to take all 10 minutes then. No, I, uh, Russ A.V., agent for the applicant with Boffman Company. I'll stand for any questions. I, I'm not sure if there was an online question for this or, or not. Somebody is online. Usually we hear your presentation then ask questions, but we can call for questions now if you like. Sure. Um, do we have a, anyone who has questions who is participating virtually? Is there somebody out there who would like to ask questions or speak on this item? Just trying. Problem I ask you, hello? Give us your okay. name and address. Can, I asked you earlier for the zone 2022, uh, 23. Um, I'm the owner of the of the property next to that, and um, I know recently that the traffic on web is extremely high, and uh, the road has a drop on the side of my property, which it does accumulate a lot of water. Uh, if you develop all this on the corner right next to me. Are you going to do anything about the web road, extended the two lanes instead of one? Ma'am, could you give us your name and address, please? Yes. My name is Aharo D. Martin, and my address is 2860 South Web Road. Do you have any other questions? Because when we can answer them. Uh, no, that's the only question I have, and consider me present on the meeting because I didn't hear my name earlier. Okay. Does the staff want to answer this question, or you want the applicant? I, I certainly can. Okay. I, uh, attempt to, again, kind of uh, similar to the traffic issues in the prior case I was up here discussing. Uh, Web Road being a, a primary arterial uh, roadway, gets expanded or improvements to Web Road obviously comes through either Wichita and or Sedgwick County's capital improvement program. And I'm not sure if this section of Web Road is programmed for improvement. But as we all know, as development occurs uh, on the periphery of a city, uh, there could be changes in land use creates uh, development pressures that ultimately spur on these types of larger scale public improvements. Uh, obviously, we have no control over the, uh, the widening or improvement of Web Road. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of the agent? I guess there was nobody else virtually wanted to go ahead. Yeah, just to add more information to that, thank you, Russ, for the explanation. 
the section of the street immediately to the east of this property is still in the county. It's in the unincorporated county. So it's not included in the city CIP. Okay. Much pleasure to the board. Move to approve as presented. Second. Warren made the motion. No, oh, I mean, you seconded it. Mr. Warren made the motion. Mr. Hartman seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? 11 0. Okay, any non public hearing items? No, sir. Any other matters? Then we're adjourned. This conference is no longer being recorded.